Hello everybody. I'd like to talk about a little problem that has intrigued people ever since we discovered mirrors. Let's have a look at what I see when I look into the bathroom mirror in the morning. Scary. Okay, when I point up, mirror mythology points up. When I point down, mirror mythology points down. When I raise my left hand, mirror mythology raises his right hand. When I raise my right hand, mirror mythology raises his left hand. Strange. Also, with writing, the tops of these characters are on top, both here and for the mirror mythology, and the bottoms are at the bottom, here and also for the mirror mythology. But this one here runs from left to right, and the other one runs from right to left. So what's going on here? It appears that mirrors reflect left and right, but not up and down. And in the setup, everything's sort of equal. So if something gets flipped one way, it should also be flipped the other way, right? Now, just to scramble your brain a little bit further, have a look at this photo here of a mountain reflected in a mirror lake. Here, up and down is being flipped, but not left and right. Now, if you find all this intriguing, you're in very good company. I've linked in a video here of one of my favorite scientists, Richard Feynman, talking about him being intrigued by this. Richard Feynman, genius, Nobel laureate, really, really famous theoretical physicist. This is a very slippery eel to pin down because when it comes to words like flipping, mirror reflection, mirror images, ordinary language is very fuzzy. For example, it doesn't distinguish between different phenomena when it comes to uh, reflection or mirror images of 2D objects and 3D objects. And that's also part of the reason why most of the explanations of uh, this puzzle, even the really, really good ones, kind of go off course a little bit and maybe in the end confuse more than they explain. So what I thought I'd do today is try to provide a, as many, really clean explanation. So there's one very important observation which lets us sidestep this whole confusion 2D, 3D, and that is Whatever the explanation, if it works, it has to work for 2D things like writing here on my t-shirt. And if it works for 2D things, it automatically works for 3D things. Why? Because I can replace any 3D things like myself with a photo, which is a flat thing, and show it to the mirror. Okay, so a clean explanation of the puzzle should just talk about 2D things. Okay, I've prepared a 2D thing cat written on a piece of paper. Now, what exactly is the mirror image of a 2D thing like this? Well, let's have a look. Look at this thing in the mirror. There's the mirror image. Now, to really pin this thing down, let's uh, press the piece of paper against the mirror. Now, the original and the mirror image are basically in the same spot, so corresponding points are touching each other. So, if I were to make the piece of paper transparent, except for the writing, the back of this would actually be the mirror image, right? And I've actually arranged this uh, so that this actually works. So now things are transparent. And you can see this one object, this one object, this picture frame, has the original and the mirror image on both sides. So it's really the same thing in some ways. And this provides us with a short answer to our puzzle, which is this. When we're saying the mirror exchanges left and right, but not up and down, what we're really doing is we're comparing the original to the mirror image. So we first look at the original, and then to be able to look at the mirror image, we make a flip to either show the thing to the mirror or here the physical object. So the flip is done by us in some way. So there's, there's a flip in there. It's not the mirror. The mirror reflects whatever's here on the right, comes back straight here, Whatever's on top comes back straight here. Whatever's here comes back straight here. The mirror doesn't exchange anything. Okay, that's a short answer, but there's a bit more to it. So, for example, what, what about this, this mountain reflected in a lake? So what I want to do now is to compare the original to the mirror image in all possible ways and see what I can say in general, okay? And I've prepared a very special object, 2D object, it's just a blob, to take out any sort of bias that we might have. I'm not using a cat or something else recognizable, okay? 
Uh, let's have a look at the mirror image. There it is. But even this representation has a bit of a bias built in the way we kind of put these things next to each other. Will become very important in a little while, but for the moment, let's just put these things down in an arbitrary way. Okay, so now we're comparing original to mirror image. And if you just kind of looked at this for the first time, you may not even see that there's any similarity between those two things. And definitely no flipping happening. But when we move things one on top of the other, we get one of those strange Rorschach pictures uh, with a nice symmetry axis here. Pull them back apart again. And you'll see that the mirror image differs from the original by a flip across this distinguished axis. There you go. And that will always be the case. No matter how we juxtapose uh, original and mirror image, there's always going to be this distinguished axis. So whenever we're comparing original and mirror image, there's a distinguished axis across which we flip to get from one to the other. It's always going to be there. And that, of course, explains most of the puzzle. But we still have to somehow explain why do we get a vertical axis and not some other axis. But actually, usually, when you look at something via a mirror, you see the thing and the mirror image at the same time. And whenever you do this, there's, there, this axis is going to be apparent. So the bathroom mirror setup is a bit different from that because there you only see the mirror image. So let's just have a look at the usual setup. You look at something via a mirror and you see the mirror image and the original. Where the axis is then depends on the relative position of the mirror and the original. So in this case, you basically got the mountain and mirror lake set up the mirror axis is going to be down here. And we actually can do the flipping here physically, like so. When I change the position of the mirror, the mirror axis will change, will always be the bottom part of this mirror frame here. And we can do the, the flipping so there's the flipping happening. And we move things a little bit further. There is a flip like that happening. Now let's have a look at the special case, bathroom mirror. Right? Bathroom mirror, we only see the mirror image. Actually, I have to fess up here. Um, I've got a special guest again. The blob was really not a blob. It was Professor Fanz, was one of my favorite characters from Futurama. I'm a huge Futurama fan. So this is what Professor Fanz sees in the mirror in the morning. Okay? Now, that's the only thing he sees. Now he makes a statement about left and right, but not up and down. How does the original come into the picture? Well, he or we supply it. We somehow put it in virtually, in our minds. So how do we put it in? Well, if I give you your original on a piece of paper, like so, would you put it next to that one like that? Probably not. The way you put it next to the mirror image is going to be like this. There's a certain bias in which we put mirror image and original next to each other. It's our bias. It's what we do. We provide the second image in a certain way. And it's quite of natural, right? I mean, this guy here is basically like a person standing up in front of us with a natural up going up. So when we put the original next to that, well, we'll also put the up up because that's how people stand in space. So the explanation for all this is whenever you compare original to mirror image, there's always going to be a flip axis. And for the special case of the bathroom mirror, we arrange things in a certain way. So we arrange for the missing picture to be compared to the original in a certain way. And that then ensures that we get a vertical axis. Now, often, you find explanations of this puzzle culminating in the statements. Mirrors don't exchange left and right. They don't exchange up and down. What they do do is exchange front and back. And that's a true statement, but it's actually confusing in this context. As I said before, you only need really to talk about 2D images. That's the essential bits. As soon as you kind of drag in the 3D bits, things get confusing. So explanation for the puzzle is finished now. What comes now is a footnote. But left and right doesn't get flipped. Well, that's reflected by these two arrows here going in the same direction. Up and down don't get flipped. That corresponds to these two red arrows going in the same direction. 
But what happens to the green arrow? The green arrow that's kind of pointing towards the mirror, the reflection is actually pointing in the opposite direction. Okay, so in terms of 3D objects like myself, the 3D mirror image is actually only inverted in the direction of the, of the green arrow. That's how I turn myself into my mirror image. Also, us being roughly self-similar across this mirror plane here probably contributes to the overall puzzlement that we experience at the very beginning. Now, I'm really uh, crazy about mirrors and there would be a lot of more things that I can say. What I want to do is I want to just leave you with um, a couple of fun things. And for those, I've asked my friend Professor Farnsworth to, to model. So he is standing in front of a straight mirror. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to get a spoon like this and then you look at it in various ways. So for example, if you look into the spoon, something strange happens. All of a sudden you see yourself standing on your head. Uh, if you look at the spoon like this, you will actually just see a normal mirror image, uh, a little bit distorted. Now for something really spooky, just take the spoon and bring it really close to, to one of your eyes. Now, you can try and explain those things in the comments. Looking forward to your answers. Also, if you want something else crazy to experiment with, you need a mirror like this. I cut this out of a garbage bin. And what a mirror like this does is it actually shows you like other people see you. So not flipped, so that this thing doesn't show you a normal mirror image. It shows you the way other people see you. A little bit distorted with this one, but basically that's what it is. So all very nice effects. Hopefully you've enjoyed this and hopefully you'll be able to provide some explanations here. That's it for today.